Hi, welcome to Sportsbook Review. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is Monday, May 2nd, and uh, we are talking right now with uh, SBR contributor, baseball handicapper Ian Cameron. We're taking a look at the overnight lines for the uh, games of Tuesday, May 3rd. we got a full slate of games tomorrow. Ian Cameron, thanks for being back with us. And uh, i got three games I want to ask about specifically. The first one, I think I'm going to bet it on the overnights uh, for sure. It's the Yankees and Baltimore, right? Now, the Yankees just, you know, they're going to win their games this year, but they just have kind of a sluggish lineup, a sluggish team in general. They're way at the bottom of the ROI standings in baseball, right? They're uh, bottom three in terms of ROI. And uh, Baltimore have been very profitable. They're one of the top teams in terms of ROI. They're almost plus 20% right now. And then the pitching matchup, Severino against Tillman. Severino, a ton of potential, but he hasn't quite been getting it done uh, reliably this year. And Tillman's been excellent. And it's not a very uh, high line. The opening line right now, minus 130, all the way up to minus 140 is what you can get Baltimore on right now. Why would we not take Baltimore at a minus 135 on the overnight line? Ian Cameron. Yeah, the Yankees are just in a free fall right now. It's been an ugly stretch of baseball for them. Offense and lack of it has been the main issue for the New York Yankees. Just 3-7 and seven in their last uh, 10 games. Uh, lose 2-3 or three at Texas. Uh, get swept over the weekend by the Boston Red Sox. Really a crushing defeat last night because they score 7 runs and still find a way to lose that game. So that just tells you right now it's just been Nothing going right whatsoever for this New York Yankees team. A tough team to bet on right now. There's no question. Luis Severino, a bright young pitching prospect with this Yankees team, expected to take that next step forward making his first full season as a starter here with the Yankees. It hasn't happened for him yet. I still think he's going to be good in time, but right now he's shown that he's a very hittable pitcher. 32 hits allowed in 19.2 innings, 13, uh, 15 earned runs allowed. You know, his peripherals are all okay. Three walks to 12 strikeouts. That's pretty good, but right now it's just a situation where, you know, he's missing. He's leaving balls up over the plate. He's being hit very hard and until he figures out better location with his pitches right now it's a pitcher that I probably want to avoid or either bet against him or leave the game alone until Severino works out the kinks that clearly he has right now uh, to open the season for the Yankees Chris Tillman a guy that started the season as a bet against pitcher for me uh, has really improved and done a lot better than I thought he would he's off to a solid start this season 3.24 ERA overall. His numbers here at Camden Yards have been very good. A 2.08 ERA, three earned runs allowed in 13 innings, five walks, 14 strikeouts, getting a lot more swings and misses than he has in the past. Home runs have been a big issue in the past for Chris Tillman. But boy, he's really negated the long ball. Just one home run allowed uh, in 25 innings pitched this season. So real good stuff from Chris Tillman. You know, 3-0 and Baltimore in his previous three home starts. So yeah, the price more than fair. I feel like the Orioles in this one, a case of the New York Yankees right now not being able to get out of their own way. All right, then the next game I want to ask you about is uh, San Francisco at Cincinnati. It's Jeff Samarja against this guy, John Moscott. Now, Moscott is really having issues right now, right? First of all, he's got a nagging injury that may or may not be affecting him, but the results just aren't there, right? He's not striking anyone out. He's giving up a lot of walks, home runs, and runs, and uh, feels that he's late to start anyway, though. Feels like it's going to be a big day for San Francisco offensively, so maybe we take a shot with uh, San Francisco even as a road favorite of about minus 145, or maybe we just play it safe and take the San Francisco team total over. Uh, but I'm thinking that, uh, you know, one way or another, uh, there's going to be value betting against Moscot here and on San Francisco offensively. What do you think? Yeah, San Francisco's lineup, like I've said so many times, it's a much improved group. I'm very excited to see what, uh, what they've been bringing at the plate on a game-in, game-out basis. Good at bats, working counts, uh, getting good. Uh, pitchers to uh, basically uh, wear themselves out uh, on the mound. I mean, Denard Spann, getting him in the leadoff role has been a big help for this San Francisco Giants lineup, and really one through nine, they give you more good at bats more quality at bats than not and should match up here well in this matchup and the Cincinnati Reds here you, do you trust them to score against Jeff Samarja uh, that could be a bit of an issue here for them uh, in this one you know Samarja is one of those guys that you know he, he's sometimes a little bit erratic uh, but we're talking about a Cincinnati Reds lineup that's really struggled uh, in the past you know Samarja has a uh, pretty good track record too, lifetime uh, in his career uh, against the Cincinnati Reds, which is definitely a good sign. You know, you do get a little bit concerned with this ballpark because home runs at times have plagued Samarja. You know, Great American Ballpark may not be the perfect fit for him, uh, but the Cincinnati offense is scuffling. San Francisco's isn't. So definitely, in my opinion, uh, advantage here for the Giants. Moss got just a mixed bag so far and not a guy I at all trust, uh, especially on a bad team. And that just makes matters even worse if you like the Reds in this particular matchup.
All right, Ian, and then the third game I want to ask you about is the next uh, matchup with Philly. We all know by now what Philly's doing, a winning oh, game in and game out. As an underdog, they are now officially the top team in baseball in terms of profitability, number one in the ROI standings at about plus 40% ROI overall on the year. And for the overnight line, they are a big underdog once again at St. Louis. Right now, the, uh, the best line is plus 147 at Bookmaker. You can get 145, 144 at various other places, and it's not even like they have one of their more questionable starting pitchers going. They've got Aaron Nola, who's been great, and then Waka is starting for St. Louis, who obviously is uh, you know, still an excellent pitcher, slightly down from his peak in his career, but it feels like Philly, just in terms of starting pitching, would have the edge here, and clearly in terms of momentum and on-game results, has a big edge. St. Louis has been uh, slightly unprofitable on the year, and especially at home. They're minus 20% ROI at home. Nola's had three excellent road starts on the year. I've just listed all these reasons to once again keep riding the Philly train tomorrow. What do you think about Philly at about plus 145 on the opening line? Yeah, slowly but surely we're starting to see a decrease on a day-by-day -day basis in the value on the Phillies. The odds makers are slowly starting to adjust to the way this team's playing right now, which is certainly above any expectations people had for this team going into the season. But I'm not sure they fully made the uh, correct adjustment yet so there probably is still value with the Phillies here at this underdog price uh, you know these bad teams or these teams that were expected to be bad before the season like the Philadelphia Phillies you don't start pounding your head against the wall and just say let's bet against them because they're due to lose you just have to ride out the streak they're on right now and this is a streak I mean the Philadelphia Phillies you could say they're a little bit fortunate They've won a lot of close games in this stretch, but the results don't lie. I mean, as of this recording, six wins in a row for this Philadelphia Phillies team. How about back-to-back -back series sweeps against Washington and Cleveland? They're doing it with solid pitching. I mean, the pitching staff has been fantastic. And even their bullpen, which I've given a lot of pro uh, criticism for uh, early in the season, and rightfully so, they started off really poor, that bullpen. They've even pitched very well lately. I think just one earned run allowed by that Phillies bullpen in their last six games. So even they've been able to put up zeros late in games after some solid starting pitching. And we've talked about Aaron Nola, Peter, you and I on these videos before. He's a guy we both have some faith in, some confidence in. We both see some upside uh, in Aaron Nola on this Philadelphia Phillies rotation. And you look at his last two starts, both of them on the road at Milwaukee and Washington, just one run allowed and 14 innings of work uh, in those two starts combined. How about three walks to 22 strikeouts for Aaron Nola in his uh three road starts so far this season impressive numbers just allowing two earned runs in 21 innings on the road so I like what I see from Aaron Nola St. Louis Cardinals in a little bit of a funk coming into this Philadelphia series got swept on the weekend at home here at Bush Stadium by the Washington Nationals that was a bit of a statement series and for the Cardinals you know to be swept in that series to struggle at the plate they only scored six runs in those three games combined against Washington could be trouble here trying to hit Aaron Nola given his form especially on the road you know Michael Walkett to me is not uh, quite at the level he was a year or two ago with the Cardinals. He is down a tick, but he has dominated here at Bush Stadium this year. I mean, two very good starts at home where he's uh, one walk to 14 strikeouts uh, in those two starts, uh, allowed just one earned run in those two uh, starts combined against Cincinnati and Milwaukee, spanning 12 innings. I would lean to Philadelphia because I think this is going to be a low-scoring tight game that they're going to have a chance to win. And usually when you get these low-scoring pitchers duels, you know, the underdog offers up even more value uh, when runs are going to be few and far between. And I'd also look at this game staying under the total here. I think the Phillies' offense... Still struggling a bit, even though they're winning games. May not be easy for them to hit Waka, but on the flip side, Aaron Nola, with the way the Cardinals' bats did not hit over the weekend against Washington, struggling at the plate, they, uh, Nola may be able to neutralize St. Louis. So definitely would lean to the Phillies at the plus price and also a lower-scoring game. May look at that game under the total as well. All right, sounds good. That's what I'm thinking about, uh, Ian Cameron. Baltimore, Philly, and uh, fading Mascot one way or another in the San Francisco game. What else would you like to bring to our attention with possible betting value for uh, Tuesday, May 3rd? Well, how about Jose Quintana for the Chicago White mm. Sox? He's on the mound against Stephen Wright. Uh, I'm looking to award the White Sox there. It's a reasonable price, minus 132. We see it right now at Heritage Sports uh, being offered with the White Sox. What can you say about Quintana? Dominant, 1.47 ERA, five earned runs, and 30.2 innings of work. Uh, uh, he's been fantastic here in his home ballpark. He pitched seven innings of shutout baseball in his one previous home start against a very good Texas Rangers lineup. Boston ain't hitting lefties. That's been the one issue with them. They're playing very good right now, but 
Boston Red Sox just 196 team batting average against lefties, 2.5 runs per game against Southpaws. So should be a good matchup here for Quintana against the Red Sox. And I'll give Stephen Wright a little bit of credit. The knuckleballer for Boston has been very good. But that 1.37 ERA, according to some metrics that I'm looking at, that's not going to last and not going to be sustainable for Wright. I see uh, FIP and XFIP both two runs and in some cases three runs higher than his ERA. And when I start to see that kind of large gap between the ERA and the advanced numbers like FIP, X FIP Sierra, it becomes a concern, and it makes me think that that ERA that Wright has right now for Boston is not sustainable. Uh, and it's worth noting, if this game is close, even if Wright holds Boston into this game, White Sox have the best bullpen in baseball right now, an MLB best 1.6 ERA. So if this game's close, the White Sox bullpen has the capability to shut down Boston late and preserve the victory. So I'd look toward the White Sox there as a reasonable home favorite in that one. And one more game that caught my eye, Dodgers and Tampa Bay Rays. I think we've got a bet against versus a bet on pitcher here. Casimir being the bet against pitcher. Okay, good job, Casimir. Two runs and in six innings last time out against Miami. Uh, but it was at Dodger Stadium where he's pitched better. But on the road, it's been a little bit of a nightmare for him. His last two road starts for Casimir, San Fran and Colorado. Ten runs allowed in nine innings over those two outings. And he's just, and the Dodgers are just not winning consistently with Casimir on the mound. One and four in his five starts. The Rays lineup has been spotty, but they do match up better against lefties, and it's been proven in their batting average and their runs per game so far this season. Matt Moore, on the other hand, he continues to impress. He's been good here at Tropicana Field. He's comfortable in this ballpark. Tampa's three and one uh, in uh, Matt Moore's uh, four road starts this season and five and one. In Matt Moore's last six home starts dating back to last season. Dodgers not hitting the ball right now. Just one and six in their last seven games overall. Not playing great baseball. You know, we see Tampa Bay around minus 110 home favorite here. Price might be a little bit cheap. I'd look toward the Rays to get the series opener in that interleague matchup. Sounds good. I'm definitely uh, looking to fade Casimir in general uh, as long as he's in the starting rotation for the Dodgers, whether it's a couple of weeks or whether it's a couple of months. Ian Cameron, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again very soon.